Damn, this lighting is kind of... I'm trying to do something different with today's video instead of just being like, yo, what's up? And then I just make a beat. Basically, like 30 minutes ago, I just went on my Instagram. I basically just asked like all my followers to ask me something so I can just answer in a video. There's a ton of shit for me to go through, but I'm just going to choose like the best ones and just shit that I think that y'all can gain the most from my answer. I want to just do like a separate part of this video. I know tomorrow I'm going to film the rest of this video, make a beat. I haven't really done like any sort of like Q&A in any of my videos, so I just wanted to like switch it up. Before we get started though, I'm up Nathan pop up my at right here. I know on YouTube you guys can see like a lot of my music making but on Instagram you can pretty much see what goes on in my like day to day life. I try to document it as best as I can so definitely go check that out. Alright I got my first question from VDNT underscore Sherma. He asked me what's your favorite song you've produced with DC so far. We only actually have two songs released. I did Out of My Body with DC in Black and then I also just did the most recent one Burning My Skin. I think my favorite song that we've done as of right now is a song called Back Road Swinging. He posted a video to it like maybe a month and a half ago. You make me lose my mind. I said I don't plan no change. Fuck the city up, put my cup to the match, speak in my language. That song is super crazy to me. There's a ton of snippets that are out there that are just like circulating that y'all can probably check out. But as of right now, it's probably my favorite. Yeah, I've been loving working with DC. He definitely brings out like the weird side of my production. I definitely try to give him like the most like unique shit. Prod Manja asked me, how do you keep yourself inspired when you work so much. I think the best way for any creative to stay inspired is to do shit outside of your creative things. I don't make music or do music related shit 24 seven. Like I have a life outside of music. Like I might just take a day and like go to the beach. On Sundays, I usually will try to get like a small amount of music work done. But unless I have like a pressing session or something that I'm like preparing for, I usually just take Sundays and be like, yo, I want to go get inspired and I want to go try something else. So yeah, I think an important way to keep yourself inspired is to get the fuck out of the studio, which is kind of hypocritical because y'all have never seen me outside of a studio before. But yeah, I do be getting outside of the studio. Andres or Diaz asked me, how do you organize who to send out to income stream? how many beats or loops a day average all right so the first part how do you organize who to send out to basically on my phone i have like my most pressing artist that i'm working with right now pinned it's super easy actually on mac if you're on macbook too basically you just right click it and you can hit pin and it'll just make their shit like a big circle on top of your messages this just helps me stay focused so like every time i make a beat they let you pin up to like nine messages and i'll just be like yeah okay i think this person will fuck with this beat i think this person will fuck with this beat and you just send it and that's it I haven't emailed a beat to an artist in so long. I honestly think that it's kind of cooked. I've never gotten a place in the office emailing an artist a beat. When it comes to like income streams or business, I don't really handle all that shit. I have a team that does that. But if you guys want to know more about the business side, definitely go peep Halfway's channel. I have Nathan pop it up in that corner. But I feel like he's giving like the best in-depth business shit about the music industry right now. So definitely go check that out. Elijah Anton. Atan asked me, what gave you the reason to move to LA and do work there? That's a great question. I get asked this all the time. I moved to LA because we ended up getting a split mine crib in Beverly Hills. Basically, almost all of us in the collective moved out to LA. I mean, like, I was already going to LA a ton, but we all made the, like, pretty much full-time move to a crib in Beverly Hills. We have a studio actually in right now. I'm not going to move the camera. I think the way that I see my career turning out, basically had to move. When it comes to working with artists directly, like, one-on-one, -on -one, it's really hard to do it at, from a distance and I feel like some of my best strengths is like being in the studio with someone or like a bunch of people and just being able to be like yo try this you try this you try this let's see what this sounds like and kind of just like orchestrating the whole thing all right let's see what my channel has been asking me recently oh this is a really good question Rod by EQ asked me if you had to restart how would you go about coming up again this is a great question I'd be asking my mentors and just like older more like bigger producers this all the time I think if I I was coming up again i would be doing the exact same shit i'm doing now which is start a youtube channel start posting reels on instagram start building a fan base of kids that fuck with you and your sound i would definitely say build like a social online persona i know a lot of people are like mixed about this in the music industry i think it's really changed my life i still think i am coming up i don't think i see myself as like a solidified producer another big part of that is like working with artists that might not be the biggest artist in the world like if you guys look at a lot of my catalog i have like big songs with big artists but at the same time i have a lot of songs with artists that are just not popping honestly those songs have done so much more for me like in the community and even just for like culturally as well 
than working with someone like a Drake or a Travis Scott. So de definitely, if you're coming up, come up with an artist or a gang of artists. That's really like the best thing you can do for yourself. Next question is from Matt Z Mintz. Yo, y'all's names is like hard to pronounce right now. And he asked me, where would you like your career to be in about three years goals? I think I want to have some sort of like publishing company of my own in my name in the next like three to five years and just really take it as big as I can, you know, pop. But yeah, I just really want to take it further than just being like Steven Schaefer, the producer. I basically want to have more job titles under my shit, you know? All right, the next question is from Abo and Polly One. And he asked me, how did you get signed to Splitmine? This is kind of like a long story, but basically to sum it up, I was a fan of like Splitmine or even at the time Tree Sound for a while. Halfway will tell you, I was literally blowing his DMs up. I was blowing like at the time Base One's DMs up, hella people. And basically one day they did like a live stream submission so like you could send your beats and they would just listen to it. And I sent my beats. I think it was like Base One and Jackie on stream. I guess they just fucked with it and somehow managed to get it to like halfway his ears and he was like, oh shit, this is hard. And then he pretty much DM'd me, he was just like, yo, here's my number, like, let's talk. At the time too, I literally had zero music followers. I think I had 800 followers on Instagram, zero posts. If you looked at my Instagram, it literally just looked like a regular like high schooler. From there, I signed and we've just been working ever since. Austin XLV asked me advice on getting into making kits slash sample packs. I feel like this is like a super simple answer, but I would say just start making them. The first one you put out is not gonna do anything unless you already are like super popping. I think my first check ever, I'll never forget it. I think I posted my first kit. I think it was called a Moonstone Sample Library. Posted it on Drum 5. I was obviously nowhere near where I am today. This is probably like mid to late 2020. I'll never forget it. My first check was for $18. If there's one thing to take from that, just start posting them. As long as you keep up with like posting content and just creating like a fan base, they're just gonna end up going up. So yeah. Oh shit, this is a fire one. You're cold asking me, what would you say to your younger self? This is a great question. This is also another example of like a question I'd be asking like my mentors and just OGs. I would say to my younger self, don't overestimate the shit that you can get done in a year and don't underestimate the shit that you can get done in like five years or 10 years. I think maybe even like a year ago or like two years ago, I would just be like pulling my hair out because I was just like, damn, I feel like I should be further than I am right now. Like what the fuck am I doing? And it was always just like a, yo, I see this other person who's only been doing it for so long already having like a moment. So I'm like, what the fuck? Like when's my time gonna come? And I feel like shit like that made me think that I wasn't doing enough. When in reality, most of this shit is a slow grind. I think a lot of the times I'll see like people blow up hella quickly and wish it was me. And then a year from now, they won't be as cool as they were before. I would tell my younger self that like the slow grind is worth it. Definitely like the delayed gratification, having to like really, really work for everything. And I would also tell my younger self to not focus on money so much. I think like early on, I was just like, yo, I'm trying to get this bread, like I'm trying to do this, do this. Even if I was like a millionaire right now, I would probably be doing the same show. I would hope I'm still making YouTube videos and dropping kits and like obviously working on music. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the questions. And now I'm gonna pass it along to the Steven of tomorrow and he's gonna make some shit for y'all. So peace. What's up y'all? It's the Steven from tomorrow. Just because I don't want this to be a fucking like short documentary video, I wanna see what type of beat I can make in 15 minutes. I don't really have any sort of direction. I know I want it to be something like weird. I'm gonna set a quick timer on my phone. Oh. Usually in this part of the video, once I have the drums down, I would probably go to like one of the synths, but I don't think I've ever chopped a sample in front of y'all like on video. So I just downloaded actually like some samples the other day, just from like digging on YouTube and shit. So I wanna see if I can just find any like good chops. A lot of the times when I'm like trying to chop samples, I'll basically just throw them directly into Fruity Slice or just raw. 
basically i'll just throw the song into like fruity slicer you can just mess with like the low and high knobs down in the bottom right those will either just give you like a bunch of small chops or just like a couple big ones This, bro, people in the comments are gonna think that this is like a pre planned thing. As you guys can probably tell, this is the day after. I'll have Nathan throw in the clip, but long story short, I just had to dip to this session real quick. Jesus Christ, bro. Get Sorry it. Sorry to cut off the mojo, man. Nah, it's all good, bro. But I actually did end up saving this beat. If I remember correctly, too, I was like halfway done. So I'm just gonna set a timer for like seven minutes and see if I can finish this beat. Yeah, let's go. I'm gonna try to find a better sample than this one though. But I'm gonna use this plugin called Prasada Sample. I'm sure you guys have seen it everywhere. I just downloaded this shit actually, so I don't wanna fucking try this shit out. As y'all can probably see, my camera just died. But if you made it to the end of this video, I appreciate you for watching. If you guys want any of the sounds I use in this video too, I'm gonna have Nathan pop up links down below. Also, be sure to like and subscribe and all that shit. It really does a lot for the channel. Also, let me know if you guys enjoyed this new like half Q&A, half making a beat type thing. And then if you guys have other video ideas too, be sure to let me know. Cause I'm always trying to like try new shit out, you know? But yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. And I'm gonna see y'all in the next one later.